well there welcome back so you have started watching videos on um, introductory robot dynamics and i am professor Bishananda. so in this uh, concluding lecture uh, we'll finish up, uh, finish the modeling uh, dynamic modeling of robot and then we'll um, discuss the morphological structure of this dynamic equations huh? so far what we have done <coughs> exploiting Lagrangian method we are able to find the relation between you see torque and the motion of the link so t1 is the torque at the joint one t2 is the torque at the joint two had there been another joint okay so all kind of um, torque and motion relation can be obtained using the same Lagrangian method. Okay. Now, um, let us see that how they look like in a, when we write them in a more compact and coupled form. So, uh, so precisely what I am trying to do I am trying to write this in the form of a vector and matrix relation. So this is a vector. For tooling robot manipulator, this is 2 cross 1 dimension vector. Then we will write all the terms related with uh, angular acceleration that means theta 1 double dot theta 2 double dot all this term we will collect and we will write them in the form of a matrix and it will look like this L1 square plus M2 L2 square so I am suggesting you also do with me with your notebook so that you have confidence you grow confidence and then you can also correct me if there is any mistake i am making m2 l2 square because fundamental principle remains the same it is so easy right you'll have to uh, derive lagrangian function you'll have to differentiate that function with respect to generalized velocity with respect to generalized um, uh, coordinate and then uh, the generalized velocity term you will have to again uh, differentiate with respect to time and then you put them in the Lagrangian um, formula so that you will get a relation between cause and effect. So this is all what we are doing again and again huh? irrespective of uh, how many links the robot might have. So this is uh, first column hmm? then second column elements will be like this m2 L2 square plus M2 L1 L2 cos theta 2 M2 L2 square. Okay. Theta 1 double dot theta 2 double dot so for tooling manipulator this matrix will be 2 cross 2 and this will be 2 cross 1 uh, joint acceleration vector hmm? plus okay so we are again um, collecting the terms uh, which are related with theta 1 dot square theta 2 dot square hmm? sin theta 2 and m2 l1 l2 sin theta 2 is 0 theta 1 dot square theta 2 dot square so this is 2 cross 2 for tooling robot manipulator this is 2 cross 1 plus there is another 
we are collecting all the terms which are related with theta 1 dot theta 2 dot eh? and we will soon study why we are uh, clustering in this peculiar form which is very very useful. Hmm? So this is as in 2 cross 2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot theta 2 dot theta 1 dot plus L1 sin theta 1 plus M2 as in L2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2 and then M2 as in L2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2. So this actually is the dynamic equation for two link robot manipulator and in couple form we can write in generalized way, okay, it's a vector, tau is a vector now, equal to m theta, theta double dot plus b theta, theta dot, theta dot, okay, plus c theta and then theta dot square plus g theta. So you may come across this uh, generalized equation again and again and again and again when you will come across a robot dynamic equation, right? So you see, this is very, very important. And let us see now what actually each term um, signifies, okay? So this matrix, 2 cross 2 mass matrix, or inertia matrix um, actually signifies the torque associated with inertia uh, associated with joint acceleration. So this is the entire expression is called inertial torque. So this is inertial torque. Okay, and this is called uh, you see theta 1 dot square, theta 2 um, dot square. So, um, this is called centrifugal and Coriolis, centrifugal torque, okay. This is called centrifugal torque, which I have written over here, okay. And this is called Coriolis torque. And this is known as gravi gravitational torque. So you see, this is the way we have actually few, uh, we have um, clustered the uh, terms and written them in uh, matrix form so that for uh, any um, handling robot manipulator, six, seven, uh, you can write dynamic equation. And today you have <coughs> The symbolic computation tool for MATLAB or Octave you can use and modeling becomes so easy. Okay, the moment you just uh, calculate L, that too, L is actually kinetic energy, system kinetic energy, minus potential energy. So this kinetic energy symbolically you can compute, potential energy symbolically you can compute and the modeling technique which uh, we used to spend several pages with uh, several uh, expression now can be programmed within a couple of hours if you know uh, symbolic computation tool of MATLAB okay, or Octave. So that's why it is very important that we understand each and every term signif uh, significant. So this is, uh, this is actually uh, inertial torque. So these are um, the mass related terms. Okay, uh, we, we have put here. So this is uh, so 
this you should write this is m11 m12 m21 m22 huh? and you see all these elements are a function of configuration that is theta so you need to update this matrix again and again yeah, with the uh, robot uh, motion because the motion the orientation is changing that is the uh, joint values are changing and you need to update this matrix these these all the matrices okay you need to update them and uh, in more uh, concrete way sometimes you can also see in a much uh, co more compact way in this form also okay so this together we have made like this so this term is centrifugal and coriolis torque this is inertial torque and this is gravitational torque so in this form also you can um, see uh, the um, actually more specifically you can write also like this okay so basically centrifugal and coriolis torque together we can um, write and this will be coupled from dynamic equation so this is the uh, robot dynamic equation mm -hmm. and then uh, if you see if the uh, torque is given left hand side is given and as a result of that your that means what does it mean it means you have uh, pi mover at each joint assume okay uh, normally jo, pi movers are not attached to the joint directly mm, through some transmission because there are advantages of not putting them at the joint okay uh, so but whatever it is so do those torque if are given that means you switch on the robot and then switch on the motors as a result of that your hand is moving some robot hand is moving something this is called forward dynamics problem forward dynamics so <clears throat> forward dynamics problem okay so torque is given now when the motions are prescribed that means the acceleration um, uh, then theta then uh, theta dot all are that motion is prescribed motions are given motion of the links are given you need to calculate the the joint torque is inverse dynamics inverse dynamics problem okay so you see forward dynamics and when these these motions are given and you need to require you you require to uh, generate appropriate joint torque to satisfy the motion requirement is called inverse dynamics so you see <laughs> uh, in case of kinematics uh, is just um, opposite I mean opposite in that sense that if left hand side was given it was a inverse uh, kinematics when right hand side was given it was a forward kinematics here it is different but if you remember the concept you will never make a mistake so forward dynamics is actually when uh, torque is given and motion as a result of that torque is the uh, motion is obtained is forward dynamics when motions are given and you record to figure out the torque which will actually um, satisfy those motion requirement is called inverse uh, dynamics problem so solving inverse dynamics problem as usual is a harder problem and this is used for controlling the robot used for controlling the robot and this is used for simulation 
so this is used for used for simulation study okay so with this i i think um, i need to tell you one more thing that what is uh, coriolis uh, force this is very interesting uh, coriolis force is a fictitious force uh, that acts on object uh, that are in motion within a frame of reference uh, that rotates with respect to an inertial frame okay now in the reference frame with clockwise motion the force acts to the left of the motion of the object um, in one with uh, anti clockwise rotation the force acts on the right which you can now see okay uh, now deflection of an object uh, due to coriolis force is called coriolis effect this is very very important this coriolis effect is coming centrifugal and coriolis effect is coming because of the uh, coupling motion of the uh, robot link which is an open kinematic chain so you need to understand and take uh, and you need to control those forces having uh, making them um, complete complete rep as far as possible complete representation in our model so that you can control them okay now um, do recognize earlier but mathematical expression and significant contribution uh, for um, determining the coriolis force actually was done by uh, this uh, french scientist um, gaspard gustave de uh, coriolis in 1835 and it, you see the coriolis force acts in a direction perpendicular to the rotation axis whereas the centrifugal force acts outward in the radial direction and coriolis force is actually um, proportional this is coriolis force is proportional to the um, uh, uh, to the motion uh, or, or or the ang angular motion right theta 1 dot theta 2 dot etc etc whereas if there are n number of, of theta theta 1 dot theta 2 dot theta 3 dot like that okay whereas the centrifugal force you know act outwards in the radial direction and is proportional to the uh, theta dot squared this is these are actually centrifugal um, these are centrifugal torque okay so it's proportional to the square of the joint speed it is proportional to the joint speed and we can also show you uh, with a little video uh, the effect of coriolis Force. So we can visualize it. Look carefully. Okay. So this is a reference. So a, a cannon is placed on a rotating disc. The cannonballs fly in straight line since no force act on them when the um, disc is not rotating. Hmm. You can see. But when it is rotating, you see the uh, cannon is now rotating. And cannon now we can actually um, this reference frame is also rotating. Huh? So this is due to Coriolis force, you know the uh, so this is the direction of the Coriolis force, you know. This is the direction of the Coriolis force. This is the direction of the centrifugal force. Okay. So these are very much um, useful for uh, rotary dynamics and you see here is a pendulum okay and the uh, uh, period of the pendulum and the rotation of the wheel is same hmm. then when they are same you will see a circle huh? and why they are called fictitious force because the um, force can only be uh, experienced uh, who is uh, moving with the body coordinate frame with the object. So, see, hmm. those who are uh, uh, with respect to natural uh, coordinate frame, no existence of that force. That's why it is called uh, fictitious force or inertial force. I think you know this uh, as a well known Dalembert principle. But here we are trying to show you that oh, beautifully, see, when uh, the period of oscillation of the pendulum is different from the uh, period of uh, rotation of the disc then you get this kind of so Coriolis and centrifugal force are 
now well understood i believe so that's it we wanted to that's our um, uh, introduction to dynamics 